Playoffs are around the corner. Who are you going to add to push you over the finish line this week? I got that and more in today's action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, you're your number one source for fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Matthew Ane, and you can find me on Twitter, X, whatever you call it these days, at Matthew underscore Ane. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the bell below to subscribe to the channel and give you a notification every time we drop a new episode. Also, please, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please leave us leave us a five-star rating or review or, you know, anything of the sort will really help out the show. And if you want a little bit more than what we offer in this 30-minute podcast, check us out on Subtext and become a member. You get a free two weeks. Link is in the description below. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use the code all lowercase locked on MLB L O C K E D. O-N, MLB, for first deposit match up to $100. All right, guys. We got a good episode. I can't believe it. We're almost in the playoffs. And whew, it's been a long season. It's been a grind. And I'm glad you're still listening. And I promise I'm going to get you over the hump. I'm sorry. I might sound a little congested. I'm dealing with probably a little bit of something, something. I don't know. All I know is I'm not really thrilled. So... I think what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to talk about a lot of bats, a lot of streaming options, and then we're going to have about four names at the end that are going to be relevant for pitching, and we'll go from there. We're going to be a stream upon us Rex the whole way through the end of this to try and get that championship. So this is crunch time. This is get used to this. We're going to fly by the seat of our pants day in, day out, and it starts here. It starts now. Um, we're going to start off with J.J. Uh, Blade of the Oakland Athletics. Jeez, um, I'm just a mess today. Uh, but day has been actually really killing it over the last week. Six runs, two bombs, seven ribs, a stolen base, batting 444. You know, it's just a great week from him. Honestly, like he has no long-term value whatsoever, but he's been on the show about a, f- a few times now where, you know, Hey, he's a great streaming option. And then when he goes cold, you drop him like he's hot. And that's what JJ Bleday does, right? You know, season numbers aren't really impressive. He has about 57 runs, 15 bombs, 45 ribs, a stolen base, 247. You know, there was a point. Like, I think, like, last month where he had a, like, you know, just a streak of, like, three, four home runs in, like, two weeks. And then he died, died, went off into, went off into the dark, went off into the sunset and said, I'll see you in a month. So that's exactly what's happening now. He's back. We're seeing him. And this is cool. So just, like, add him. Don't care. And then, you know, drop him when he's hot. He's 23% owned. So, like, you know, he's out there in a lot of leagues. He should be a viable streaming option for all of you guys. So, Definitely, definitely add him right now. Um, probably not my number one guy, but he's up there. All right, we're going to move on to this next guy here, David Peralta, man. Uh, he's also performing pretty well, I got to say. You know, whew, he's on the uh, San Diego Padres, he's about 12% owned. And he, he's he been uh, he's been doing some good things. Five runs, two bombs, five ribs, batting 350 on the week. You know, twelve percent owned in there, and he's and he's having a week like this. Come on, guys, we can be better than that. I think honestly, he can go out there, he can perform for you at least for the next like week. You know, be that difference maker in you know off days or when one of your studs is slumping. You know, you slide him in, you stream him, and when he goes cold, you drop him like he's hot, or your guy gets hot again, then you switch him. You know, the one thing at this time of the year is nobody's an instant start. If they've gone a couple days without even getting a hit or producing any kind of counting stats with no hits, it's time to it's time to bench that player. It's not a drop like this week, this this past week. I I benched um, Luis Robert for most of the week, and then you know I had to start him that one day, and then that's the day he kind of picked back up. He hit the bomb, double dong, and boom, here you go. So it's the same thing with Peralta, same thing with Bidet, same thing with every guy I'm going to mention today, and. You know, it's kind of like a next man up thing. There's no, you know, oh, I'm going to bench. I can't bench my superstar. This is the time of the year where I do. I will do that because it's just time to get the numbers, get the counting stats and kind of push yourself over the top week in, week out and get those big wins. 
And this is both for points and for Roto and for um, head-to-head, right? You just got to beat that matchup or you got to take that category. So Peralta is going to help you get over there. If he can keep this up, boom. The chances are that he's going to continue this. About 50-50 had two home runs last week, two home runs this week. You know, the pace is kind of, you know, not likely in his favor. There should be some negative regression. So if you pick him up today and he's not performing by Wednesday, you drop him like he's hot. I don't care. So, you know, it is what it is. There's always that one mega off day, and that's the day you're going to end up playing him. Or if you got a guy cold. So, yeah, and David Peralta now. We're going to talk about Brendan Rodgers of the Colorado Rockies. Um, You know, my guy is about... 20% 20% owned, and he's another one performing right now. And he's not a name that I even consider for anything outside of a streaming option. So let's just not get this twisted because I know he is a fantasy darling for a lot of you guys out there. I can understand why, right? You know, he has attractiveness. He hits in, hits in, uh, you know, what do you call it? Course field a, a good amount of time. So why wouldn't we want to add Brandon Rogers? And yeah, let's do it, right? Like, oh, I'm having trouble here, of course. <laughs> and um, yeah, 20% owned, and he's had a good week. Five runs, two bombs, seven ribs, batting 320. And honestly, guys, like, you can't really pass up on that. Second base is is rough out there. You know, like, you're still probably dealing with no Ozzy Albies. You're still probably dealing with, you know, guys just not performing and things like that. So, like, hey, if there's a if there's a will, there's a way. So, just stream him at the second base position, and I promise it'll be just fine. Um, Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's keep moving. Sorry, guys. Uh, whatever's going on up here is messing with everywhere, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm here to give you a, I'm here to give you a good show and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a bunch of good names. And this guy here, I've talked about about seven or eight times already throughout the year, David Hamilton, David Hamilton, you know, when he's hot, he does provide a lot of, a lot, a lot of a fantasy value. It just, it comes in bunches, right? Plays for the Boston Red Sox has second and shortstop eligibility, 23% owned. And honestly, you know what? This last week was pretty decent. Four runs, a bomb, three ribs, two stolen bases, 250 batting average. He has stolen base upside. He has 31 stolen bases on the year. So if you're down in stolen bases and you're in a roto league, yeah, I'd go and add David Hamilton and start him every day. Long term, he's probably going to like, you know, kind of ruin your batting average. But if you can make up with make up for it in other places and have David Hamilton just steal everything under the sun for you. It's a great ad in those regards because he's just going to fill up the the stolen base uh, category like crazy. And when he's hot, he does provide you with a little bit of power. You know, it's not like Boston's absolutely terrible. They do have good names. And, you know, he's able to get on base when he he does. He gets brought home. So things are all good and grooving for David Hamilton. While he's hot, we're going to add him. There's no reason not to. He's somebody that can push you over the edge and, you know, bring home a W week in and week out. So add David Hamilton now. Coming up next, I got two bats left, and then we're going to roll right into our arms. I'm probably going to have to add arms on the fly or bats because we're moving nice and fast through this episode, which is not a bad thing at all. And like I said, you know, coming up next is Andrew Vaughn and Jorge Polanco. Prize Picks is, the, is America's number one daily fantasy sports platform with over 5 million active members. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick more or less than two to six players' stats and watch the winnings roll in. Exploring my skills on Prize Picks this season adds an extra layer of excitement to daily fantasy sports. With just a few taps, you can transform $10 into $1,000 with 100 times a payout prize picks is incredibly user friendly you can make your selections and submit your entries in less than 60 seconds and as the host of lock fantasy baseball i got some great picks to get you started off with and i promise they won't fail offer aaron nola to have higher higher than five strikeouts in his next start honestly that's kind of like a no-brainer for me he's been doing it pretty much only every other start offer jonathan india to have higher than 1.5 total bases in his next outing again He's been great right as of recently. And offer Bryce Harper to have higher than 0.5 home runs in his next game. 
Download the app today and use the code Locked On MLB for first deposit match up to hundred dollars. Again, download that app today and use the code Locked On MLB for first deposit match up to hundred dollars. Prize picks run your game. Are you watching Fox Sports and ESPN on your TV all day? Have you had to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or free on the Amazon Fire TV channel app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Introducing the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, Diamond on uh, Diamond Club on Subtext, your ultimate fantasy baseball companion. As the season unfolds, rely on our dynamic content. Get real-time alerts right to your phone, including waiver wire rankings, instant call notifications, injury reactions, and a whole lot more. Say ahead of your fantasy leagues by joining the Diamond Club on Subtext, where your path to victory begins. And like I said, top new members get a free two weeks the link is in the description below september call-ups are around the corner you don't want to miss it we already had guys like junior Comanero getting the call we've had jason dominguez getting the call today it looks like so it's all good i love it and honestly he should be on the show and i'm gonna add him in about five so yeah i don't know why i didn't include jason dominguez of the new york yankees on on this episode actually i kind of do I picked the names probably around noon. He got the call around three. So, yeah. I forgot to review it, but Jason Dominguez, glad it, got, glad it came to my head. He needs to be added literally everywhere. You know, he's dealt with injuries this season. He's obviously coming back from Tommy John, which is really unfortunate. But this kid has the stuff to be the guy. Last year, when he got like his really, like, I won't even say cup of coffee. He got coffee in an espresso cup, took two sips, and then tore his, and then had to get Tommy Johns. That's essentially what Jason Dominguez's MLB career was. Um, you know, in his literally 31 at-bats, the stat line is amazing. Six runs, four bombs, seven ribs, a stolen base, batted 258, and his first real showing in the MLB. Jason Dominguez is an awesome, awesome prospect. Top 10 right now, and it's only going to get better for this dude. I am a massive fan, not because I'm a Yankee fan, but because I am a fan of the talent. He's not the tallest dude. He's not the biggest dude. He's not the strongest dude, but he is a stud and somebody we need to talk about. And this season, even though he's been riddled with injuries, the stat line is great. 151 at-bats, 22 runs, 6 doubles, 7 bombs, 24 ribs, nine stolen bases, walked 15 times with 38 strikeouts, batting 298, an OBP of 365, a slug of 477, an OPS of 842. Okay? Dominguez has all the stuff of, of what you expect a big-name prospect is going to do. He's a hit. We've already seen his talent translate instantly into the bigs, and he could be a league winner. You need to add him now if possible. If he's out there, if he wasn't stashed, you need to go and get him. Dominguez, I believe, right now is 24% owned in Yahoo Leagues, and Dominguez is absolutely stellar. Please add him now. Do yourself a favor, and you don't want to be on the receiving end of getting that Dominguez treatment because it's going to be uncomfortable. Give them the business. Don't get the business. Jason Dominguez is an instant add here. Add him now. Stop the podcast. Do it now. All right. Let's move to Streamer and Andrew Vaughn. Andrew Vaughn, I've talked about him so many times. Chicago, uh, actually, I don't even know what team he's on at this point because my head hurts. <laughs> Let's see here real quick. I'm having a brain fart. He's still on the White Sox. Plays first base. He's 28% owned. And, man, here's the thing. It's not like he's having to blow your socks off and knock your socks off kind of week. He had four runs and he's batting 400. Now, the difference is when Andrew Vaughn gets hurt, he start, uh, gets gets hot. He starts with getting, getting, putting contact on the ball. Once he starts doing that, things usually follow with it. Andrew Vaughn starts getting the power, starts getting moving and grooving, and he's really streaky. So I think we're about to catch him right at the beginning. Worst case scenario he gets you a couple runs, maybe a rib or two, and he's batting about 300 next week and this week, and you're happy. He's still contributing. You don't have to play him every day. 
But on the off chance he starts heating up, which I think we're about to start seeing the peak, it's about the bull run, you're going to want to be on that side of it, streaming against everybody. Vaughn can push you over the over the over the uh, finish line this week. Get you that win, possibly you know get either get you to clinch or get you in the position to make the playoffs. You know injuries have been brutal this year, so not everybody you know is doing as good as they thought they would after the draft. Right? I'm one of those people. I literally lost like seven starters. Okay, like in my one keeper league, I lost Strider, Lewis. Roberts in the first week. Okay. Then it just keeps, it kept going and going and going of how many injuries I've had. And I'm fighting my way all the way to the playoffs. I am literally seven, seven wins out of the playoffs, which, and you know, head to head categories. That's literally, I have to win over that guy in the next three weeks, which ha, I already started a playoff uh, a run going 11, one on this dude this week, going to take him down. I'm going to get that playoff spot. Andrew Vaughn is somebody I am streaming this week. So Andrew Vaughn is somebody you need to have on your lineup. I've streamed him about 15 times this year. You know, he's a great spot start. And I'm telling you, once he gets going, you're going to be starting him over guys that are underperforming that you've had all year long. And you just let him ride it out. And then you ride it out. And then when he cools off, you put your guy back in or he heats up. And then you switch him out because the upside is probably better with the stud that you drafted versus the guy you picked up on the waiver wire. Unless your name is just Jason Dominguez. So, Add Andrew Vaughn, stream him now, and I promise it won't fail. So let's move on. Let's talk about Jorge Polanco, okay? Uh, The Seattle Mariners, 26% owned and second and third base eligibility. I love the Swiss Army knife of both second and third, you know, corner and center infield eligibility. That's fantastic. On top of that, you know, second base has been real rough this year as well. So get him in there, and he's performing. He really is. Great week. Five runs, two bombs, four ribs, batting 389. That's a great week. And I love Polanco. He's always been a guilty pleasure for me. I've won a couple championships with him on my team in those, in those you know, glory days of Jorge Polanco. And when he's good, he's good. And he's already outpacing his, his uh he's on pace for what he was doing last year. And I think he's gonna he's gonna then do better because he only played about three uh three hundred. So where I'm getting at with this is essentially Polanco is somebody you need to just add. He's, you know, having a better pace. He's doing his things. And if he can just keep this up even to, you know, where he's getting at least 270 batting average, he's, you know, providing the runs and ribs. That team is decent. And Julio is back. So things should be moving in the right direction. So add, add Jorge Polanco. Coming up next is pitching. The last half of the show, I got four names that are actually going to, you know, help you get over the edge. Maybe even have some long-term value with our next guy here in Eduardo Rodriguez. We'll talk about that and whether we're adding him or or just avoiding him or even just keeping him on your on, on your watch list. We'll talk about that coming up next. All right. You've heard us talk about FanDuel, American One Sportsbook. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers have uh, can bet $5 and get three weeks free trial of NF, NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV-based plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season uh, Sunday, regular season game Sunday afternoon out-of-market out of games. All you need to do is Google need a Google account and a current uh, – a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and download America's number one sports book. That's a sweet deal. Three weeks of fan uh, of NFL Sunday ticket. Yes, yeah, sign me up. Check out and and place a bet on FanDuel. And you know what? I got one for you. Bet bet any kind of strikeout numbers of the over. For any pitcher against the White Sox, and they bet five dollars on it, I'm sure it's going to hit. And then you also get a free three weeks of NFL Sunday ticket. Hop on now! All right, we're in the latter half of the show, and straight up, we're going to go. We got pitchers, and like I promised at the top, Eduardo Rodriguez of the Arizona Diamondbacks. 
And he's about 48% owned with good good measure, dropping as we speak because he's had two bad outings. But, I mean, you know, he's fresh off the IL. He really hasn't had much time to get going. we got to be patient with him. And how intriguing it is, if I'm in a position where, you know, I've already clinched or, you know, I'm pretty much good, I'm going to I'm gonna add him, I'm going to stash him, and you know what? It is what it is. It's not going to burden my 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 rotation or my team by having him because it's only going to make it better when he figures it out. And Warner Rodriguez has some great stuff. You know, the kid just needs to stay healthy. Last year alone, right before the injury, 152 innings pitched, 13 wins, 143 uh, Ks, 330 ERA with a 115 whip. Fantastic stuff from Eduardo Rodriguez. You know, you, you need to be patient with guys coming off the IL, especially guys of this kind of caliber of talent when they're able to go out and put out, put on shows like that. Now, the only thing about Eduardo Rodriguez is he doesn't really light up the underlying stat categories. I don't know how he actually stays so successful other than the fact that he has great movement on all his pitches, especially last year. You know, his fastball sits at about 92 miles an hour. He does you know, give up decent average exit velocity at 88.6 miles an hour. He doesn't really get guys to whiff, but, and he doesn't really create, you know, ground balls or prevent, you know, hard contact at a good rip, but he's not far off from it being elite either. So it's just one of those things. And he, and it's not like, okay, he's like this super knock your socks off kind of guy, but I mean, he's predominantly a four seam fastball pitcher that, you know, does great. And then puts guys away with his cutter. And then, Throws in a changeup at just as much as he throws in the cutter when he tries to throw you off his four seam fastball. He does have a sinker that he barely throws and slider as well. If he can increase those usages, this kid can be monstrous. I just want to see the pitch mix increase. And that also what could they could be working about working on before he was getting uh, returning from the injury was how can we, you know, mix it up, make you more successful. And that's other things too. So he's probably just trying to get, get some, you know, ground underneath his feet to kind of, you know, you know, throw out these, these, uh, these new pitches and this pitch mix. I'm not sure. I'm not in the room talking about what he, what he's good at, but Eduardo Rodriguez, I think is going to be successful. We've already saw it. So last thing I want to do before we, before I move on from, from Eduardo Rodriguez is also let you know, he's facing the Marlins. Marlins don't scare me, even though Marlins have, you know, shown a little bit of pop, but I mean, I ain't scared of Jesus Sanchez. I ain't scared of any of them. So I'm going to roll him out this week. And just see what happens. So, and, and Eduardo Rodriguez, be patient. And in a good matchup, I'm rolling him out. But let's move on. Let's talk about Joe Et, um, Etsy's. I think that's how his name is. Um, of the Oakland Athletics. 7% owned. And he has a nice matchup. He's going up against Miami as well. And, you know, it's a great start for him. He's shown that he can be successful at times. His ERA over the last couple starts just had, like, Hasn't been bad outside of the last one against the Mets, but, I mean, Lindor's hitting the cover off the ball and Alonzo's heating up. So, you know, to be expected, and it's a division game. But you're going up against the Tampa Bay Rays this time. It's a, it's a layup matchup. They've been terrible. So he starts on Tuesday. Does have a second start, but I ain't starting him against Seattle. Seattle's been, you know, quasi good. And then Julio just decides to flip a switch. It's ball game, and... He's going to get lit up like a Christmas tree. So I'm not trying to do that, but I am going to start him on Tuesday and I'm going to rock and roll. Um, you know, he was able to handle, handle himself against a bad matchup with Chicago White Sox, was able to handle the Dodgers, only gave up, only gave up what, two runs? And then, you know, had a three ERA through six. Like that's solid. Got the quality start as well. You know, he's able to go out there and provide pretty good stats. I mean, honestly, he's had one bad start from one, two, three, four, five, six in a row. Then had another bad start and had one, two, three, four, five was his another bad start. Like he's able to be consistent and provide fantasy value. You can't just pass on him in the right matchup. I'm willing to roll him out every time. So this next guy here is also on the Oakland Athletics, and he's also low owned. And that's Bitto of the Oakland Athletics, 16% owned. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last his first name. Um, so we're not. Um, but, uh, but anyway, Bitto of the athletic 16% owned is also has a nice matchup. I might add, he is going up against the Tampa Bay Rays as well. 
So it looks like another good matchup for Oakland and another good matchup for another Oakland Athletic. Um, I'm all about it. As long as it all stays projected that way, we're, we're going to have a good time. Bido should go out and have a have a decent decent outing. His last outing against San Francisco, six innings, got the win, six Ks, no earned runs, .5 whip, and got the quality start. Matchup before that, Toronto, six innings, got the win, five Ks, no earned runs, .5 whip, got the quality start. Again, same story against the Dodgers. Six innings, six Ks, a three ERA, a one five whip whip was a little high, but still got the quality start. Got lit up against the Angels, oddly enough, but then was able to handle himself against Houston. He goes out there in, in tough matchups and handles his stuff. Bitto should be added. Bitto should be started in most. And if he does end up lining up against Tampa Bay, man, that's going to be a great time. So start him now and, and, and add him. Like, I promise. You know, I like these guys are great streams. Bitto, he keeps going the way he is. He might end up staying in my rotation until he proves me otherwise. Um, I like him a lot. In those, in those regards. So, Bitto, must add. Like, must add. Do it now. Do it. <laughs> anyway, all right. Kyle Harrison of the San Francisco Giants. 47% owned. You know, didn't have a great start in his last outing. But, but here's the thing. Going out against the White Sox. You know, yeah, Luis Roberts scares me. But how often are you going to hit two home runs in a single game? So, I'm not really that scared. Yes, Andrew Vaughn getting hot, hot too. Again, I got two guys in the whole lineup I got to worry about. Yeah, I don't care. You know, he's still able to provide some some value. The only thing is he's a today ad. So if you're not in same day ads, you can pretty much just cut it here. Um, but if you are in the same day ad, add him. This matchup should be good. He's he, he's doing all right. Like, I mean, last start against Atlanta, it's Atlanta. You know, he got lit up. Start against Cincinnati, Great American Hitter Park, got lit up. But handled himself against Washington. Hand himself against Colorado with 11 Ks. Hand himself at Colorado, 6 Ks, no earned runs. Um, hand himself against Minnesota. Got lit up against Cleveland, but Houston handled. Like, it's not like it's all bad. There's some bright spots. And this this is a bright start, start, uh, spot matchup. So Kyle Harrison, if you're in the same day, it needs to be added. He should have been on the Friday show, but, you know, we weren't we, – we didn't see this one coming. Um, but, yeah. Chicago White Sox matchup, yeah, all day. Press play. Go all day. Add Kyle Harrison now. So, guys, thank you so much for being with me. Sorry for all the little hiccups today. I'm not all really here. I've been uh, dealing with some stuffiness. How in August? I have no idea other than my kids go to daycare, and then they come home sick, and they get me sick. Um, yeah. Also, is what it is. Guys, if you want any uh, advice, Check us out on subtext. You want some football advice? DM me. I got you. And anything else under the sun, we're here for you. Please like, subscribe, comment, rate, review. Um, you know, leave us a uh, awesome review. And um, please, if you like us so much, you're gonna want to go and check out our boy Sully. Sully is on Locked On MLB. He actually puts on an awesome show. He's funny. He's comical. Great breakdown of of teams and takes. Check him out now. Locked On MLB. And guys, have a great, great rest of your day. Peace.